this right here, this pantograph, is one that we put numbers inside all of our folders. Every folder has its own number. We keep a record of uh, what we do. A lot of the parts on it I've built myself. The holders, uh, we put the uh, handle down here and follow the numbers here. And, it, and of course, it, it cuts down here whatever we choose to uh, have it cut. It's an old ring. That's what it was made for originally was to uh, make little signs out of plastic. Here's some of the fonts, the different things that we have, the different letters to do uh, to do the different yeah the different numbers. We have, we have a script and all the different numbers. This this here is one, but I use it as an inlay pantograph. That's where I put a diamond right here in a folder. I'll put the folder handle here and cut the diamond in it uh -huh. off a pattern. When I put the D and the arrow on the titanium folders, I use this pattern here. Yeah, oh, okay. And I cut about 18 to 1. You move the, uh, the slides around. This right here, this is another. This is the one I use. You see the different styles for cutting different patterns. This This is an old garden from probably, I'm going to guess, the 30s or the 40s. And it will follow this pattern here. This is a diamond pattern. It'll cut, it'll cut the, uh, whatever I've put over here. Break it down a little bit. I'm going to break that cutter. Now, it'll run right on around. And then I can come up and cut the inside to put a diamond in it. Very, very accurate. This is pre, this predates CNC machines. Gotcha. Back in the, in the 30s and 40s and the 50s, you would have had eight or 10 or 15 lined up in a, in a factory with guys standing here making dies. Uh-huh. And he's making just dies for uh, swapping out the out pieces. Or just whatever. Yeah. That was at the Pro Boy CNC. That's awesome. And of course, the surface grinder. This is uh, for roughing out the blades, taking a lot of stock off quick. That's why the belt. It's uh, very, very aggressive. Uh huh. And then afterward, we'll take what we've done here and come to this big grinder and put a finish on it. Gotcha. So it's a much more accurate run. You get the tenth of a thousand with it. Wow. All the boxes you see, these squares are dust collectors. Uh huh. It keeps the shop. So you're not breathing, clean. breathing dust. Yeah. <laughs> the handle machine. All of my handles are finished and shaped right here on these belt grinders. Here's one that's finished. We just finished it. And it was finished here. And of course, finished buff on the, on the buffers. My buffers are all uh, set up where I can change the wheel. I don't have to take the wheel off, I take the arm off. Much more convenient. Yeah. I can take any of these wheels, take them down here and change them with these. Take them on down and put them on a different buffer. You can see here's one here for, for shaving handles. This is another another handle right, uh, belter. A lot of the grinding is done here on this grinder. This is a, a dozer grinder that all we use it for here. The shaving handle. We'll put a 36 grit belt on and just get after it. That's a dust collector. That catches everything that comes off of here. This, this is what every, every folder maker needs. I've got about a 
like seven of these. The little turret drills. Oh yeah. Drill around and get to whatever bit you want. Then you can drill your holes. Come back to the next one. Then I'll go on around and account for whatever I've done. That's super handy. An old square wheel grinder that's been dozerized. It, uh, it's pneumatic tension. This is a, a K and G attachment I put on it. This is another little belting machine that we uh, do folders on. You see the little narrow belt on it. Yeah. This is another dozer grinder. A uh, little bit different than the standard grinder. Works just the same. This is a buffer. This is where I sharpen my knife. On a hard felt wheel. Uh -huh. It's a little bit less sophisticated than some of the others. This, of course, right here, this is a folder bench. This is an inlay that I did on the pantographs. It's uh, stabilized your wrap bone with a coral inlay. It's not totally finished yet. Some of the other, that's a stag handle knife. They're, they're all in the process of being made. This one needs to be ground. This is on the middle machine. We do fold of work on it. All of everything in the shop is speed control. It, it, it's either DC or AC can uh, three phase control it on it. You see, I can control my speed. Yeah. I never jump a belt. We just turn it up. A really old claws and drill press that all of the barrels and bullets inside wore out, so we took them off and threw them away and put a DC motor on them. That actually that came out of uh, that came out of one of the knife factories. These are these are all little dedicated milling machines that we only do one one thing with. That's what they're set up for. And don't use it for anything else. This is a little cutoff grinder that I cut pins off with. And uh, not much else. This right here, this is uh, an important tool. It's a little lazy Susan that we set the indent balls in a folder with. And you see the different little holes, that's for setting the balls at different depths. Ah. And then if we decide, oh, that ball don't need to be there, we're going to punch it out. I have a groove to punch it out with. Gotcha. It's homemade. It's about everything we've got is homemade. This is where all of our, which all the knife makers have sanding discs, but I've got mine where I've got a precision platen on it. And, uh, we flatten all the handle materials. This is a DC control drill press. So I shut it down. That's a ream for reaming handles, reaming the uh, hole for the nut. I made it. You have to make just about everything for knife making. Or than anyone makes knife making too. Right. This is the uh, command post. This is where we sit and we think about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And we may go to work today. You know, it's uh, you see, look at the table. There's been a lot of activity right here. Yeah. Got to. Time we cook. We cook on our stove. Uh, mostly I boil 
nice blades after I put guards on to uh, neutralize the flux. That's why you see the top of the stove is dirty. Gotcha. It's probably been a thousand pots of gumbo made in that stainless pot right there. Oh. Being from South Louisiana, my specialty is gumbo. This is my fabrication shop. This is uh, where we saw the R knives out. As you can see, I'm, right now I'm fabricating food. That's why all this stuff is piled up here. This is a uh, drill press material made for it. Not knife making, I, I, I drill big holes in my tool. Got the high grind and yeah, that's a handle I like. A little more neutral. Yeah, of course. I try to keep. I try to keep a knife of everything, so uh, I know what to, I'm looking at. Yeah, you have a reference point. Yeah. This is uh, some of the other stuff that I've made for over time. We made a, a lot of these. The big commando. Oh yeah. That one's popular. And this, I didn't make, I only made about three. AG owns the original, or did. Goldie's got it. It was supposed to be the first buoy made by Randall. And uh, I extended the handle a little bit longer. Uh -huh. uh, it wasn't very long. A Bo Randall must have had really small hands. And this is this is my hunting knife. It's got all my logos on it. Yeah. Every logo I put on a knife is on here. That's one of my slip joints. I've made a few. Okay. That's some of the old Western House. Oh, okay. The old white paper. Yeah. It came out of uh, Trey's factory. Can't really get that anymore. No, no. There's somebody selling it by sheets. It can't be the old Western House. Mm hmm You know, it's uh, and that's that's uh, <clears throat> one I made for myself. I've I've kept it. I've got about 25 of like this I've made and kept. Uh, supposedly, Western House had to quit making it because the EPA said that the resin they were using was a carcinogen. Ah. Well, if that was the case, how can these people be using the same formula today? I don't believe this stuff they're selling is really the old Western House. Yeah. Norplex owned the Western House lo uh, trademark and they call they call their material now uh, micrata. Right. And they're really the only legal ones to, to do it. Uh, they don't fight other people that would like to call them micrata, micrata, yeah. micrata. It's not really micrata. No, they all. It's something <laughs> else. Their own formula. And of course this is uh this is our latest where we stop if we need to, to stop and, and uh, make a shaft, make some item for a folder, we got a latest to do it with. We don't have to wait three weeks for the machine shop to do it. Yeah.